Let us be gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The peace and grace of God be with you. Let us pause a moment as we begin our prayer and worship this morning, calling to mind those areas of our life in need of God's mercy and forgiveness, and the forgiveness and patience of one another. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Almighty God, Grant that your people may be ever watchful for the coming of your only begotten Son, that as the author of our salvation himself has taught us, we may hasten, alert with lighted lamps, to meet him when he comes, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I, the Lord, your God, teach you what is for your good and lead you on the way you should go. If you would hearken to my commandments, your prosperity would be like a river, your vindication like the waves of the sea, your descendants would be like the sand, and those born of your stock like its grain. Then their name never cut off or blotted out from my presence. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of the sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the laws of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. He is like a tree planted near the running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff with the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, and the way of the wicked vanishes. Allow the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord will come, go out to meet him. He is the Prince of Peace. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowds, To what shall I compare this generation? It is like children who sit in marketplaces and call to one another. We played the flute for you, but you did not dance. We sang a dirge, but you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said, He is possessed by a demon. 
The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said, Look, he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is vindicated by her works. The Gospel of the Lord. The comparison Jesus makes in today's gospel is pretty telling of the frustration he must have been feeling toward the opposition from Israel. Jesus compares the crowd's obstinacy with that of a group of children playing make-believe games and calling out to one another. Jesus is not disrespecting young people here. Rather, he is pointing out that the crowd is judging as a child would. Exceptions aside, young children generally have a more limited view of the world. Their priorities are not the same as the priorities of adults, and they lack the same breadth of life experience and understanding. The expectations of young children are formed by inside-the-box thinking, the familiarity and the predictability experienced in their daily lives, influenced by their families, culture, and context. Therefore, a tune played without spurring a dance and a sung lament without mourning would just be plain old weird, even in a made-up game, and judged accordingly by a young child. However, the adult crowd reacting to John and to Jesus, and conditioned by a cruel world, take a much darker view accusing John of being possessed by a demon, and accusing Jesus of being a glutton and a drunkard. It's easy to say John and Jesus were misunderstood, but that lets the crowd off the hook too easily. The people reject John the Baptist and Jesus for their habits of eating and drinking and who they associate with, judging by appearances by the company that they kept, making easy, childlike excuses that mask the real obstacle that stands in their way of accepting the message that gives life. They don't want to change. Change is difficult, especially when the reward of change is not something offering instant gratification or instant results. I think about how the airlines having an overbooked flight will at the gate of departure offer frequent flyer miles for making a switch to a later flight. I rarely see anyone stepping forward for that deal. It takes effort, courage, and humility to repent and begin to live right lives, accepting God's message and being transformed, coming into right relationship with him and with our neighbors. We call that metanoia, and we can only get there by way of God's grace. The good news is that we are not alone. We can and need to lean on God for help, taking baby steps by making one positive choice after another, and remembering our faith life is a marathon, not a sprint. We can also recognize another dynamic occurring in this pericope, especially at this time of year. You can't make everyone happy. Like Goldilocks assessing the perfect temperature of her porridge, the crowd wants a Messiah that is just right, based on their own expectations. And since John, the forerunner, and Jesus did not align with what those expectations were, they were judged to be flawed persons, and their teaching fell on deaf ears. For the crowd, John's message of the coming judgment was seen as too threatening, and Jesus' message of love, mercy, and peace was seen by some as too radical, and by others as milquetoast. The gospel challenges us to reassess the expectations we place on others which we know are conditioned and can often be unrealistic. More importantly, 
it invites us to avoid limited thinking about God. Our God is much bigger, much more magnificent, powerful, merciful, and loving than we can ever imagine. We can't put God inside a box. Walling God in by our flawed and incomplete expectations prevents us from entering fully into the mystery and experiencing the dynamic, wonderfully surprising love relationship that awaits us. As we continue to remain awake and look forward with hope for peace, love, and joy that is to come at the remembrance of our Savior's nativity and the promise of his second coming, let us endeavor to imitate God's goodness. Let us be mindful of remaining receptive to the change that brings forth our continued transformation and conversion. Commit to a considering a reset of often unrealistic expectations and meet our neighbors where they are with love and mercy. And remember that our God of surprises was, is, and will always be infinitely beyond all expectations. Let us bring our prayers before our God. <clears throat> that as we journey through this Advent season, we may more and more appreciate the God who comes close to us. We pray. We pray for all those who are traveling, especially those experiencing uh, adverse weather, for their safety. We pray. We pray for all those who uh, live in the midst of war and violence in our own city and country, especially in Ukraine. We pray. For those who are ill, those who care for them, for those who have died, we pray. Let us pause now to call to mind in silence those other prayers that we bring with us today. For these we pray. For Mark and for all we promise to hold in our prayers this day, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O gracious and holy God, hear these prayers of your people. Strengthen us in holiness. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We bless you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us our spiritual food. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that our offering may be acceptable to God the Almighty. Amen. 
Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and come to our rescue with your protection of mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming our human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with the angels and saints and the whole company of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory is without end. We acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Indeed, you are holy, O Lord. You are the source of all holiness, and we ask you to make holy these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when they had finished supper, Jesus took the cup. Once more he gave you thanks, and giving it to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have counted us worthy to be in your presence and to serve you. We pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs with them to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> we pray now as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we might be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look then not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, happy and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word for my soul. Let us pray. <clears throat> it's 
strengthened by this food of spiritual nourishment, we ask you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and to hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and may the blessing of God come upon you and remain with you always. The blessing of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Good morning. You want me to take that book? <laughs> 